Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel and a very special day today as it's hump day. It's not just a hump day, it's also the last day of the month. And being that it is the last day of the month, we got all sorts of higher term time frame ideas to be speaking about. That one, which uh, one will confirm today, and then the next will confirm on Friday, potentially could shift around the macro picture to really favor the bullas for a big at least bear market bounce, uh, maybe even a macro reversal, always possible, of course. But that is starting to become more and more relevant. The thing is, though, these next, uh, I guess, two days are incredibly important for that. Um, and one of the major things is going to be happening tonight. So we'll have a lot to discuss tomorrow. Other than that, I wanted to once give, uh, once again give notice to the Black Friday sale going on right now for uh, for our app. As we have all programs 20% off right now, please understand that it is the best idea to watch the promotional videos if you are interested in any one of the programs or indicators because they're going to explain who they're for and who they're not for. In fact, I even have a video coming out later today. It's another strategy video um, where I just I give away a strategy actually from the quant program. In fact, it's not even in the quant program yet. Uh, it'll be uploaded um, a little bit later. It's basically an optimization of a current strategy, but uh, one that I quite like and one that I've been working off of and I think that, well, I think others might find value in it as well. And it can obviously give insight as to what to expect uh, for the quant program if the promotional video is is not good enough. Now, there's also several videos in the past as well going over strategies, but it's for my moral conscious and then also for my moral conscious because I've been you know, having affiliate links to Bybit and Apex Pro, um, which makes me feel like, hey, I should probably give you <laughs> at least at least like a workable viable temple uh template that i actually use um that you can use for yourself here too um and of course they still got their their current promotions going on like zero percent maker fees on derivative contracts blah 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 you already know the deal uh 30 thirty thousand dollars in deposit bonus of 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 magic and net money <laughs> who the hell knows anyway started off the let's start off the um analysis right in over here again with the heavy hitters on the monthly i'm gonna go through the full explanation of this chart but the big 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 focus between it now and the end of the day the actual closure of the month is this what slope change if any do we get on the monthly accumulation and distribution indicator if it continues with its downward slope I would say that there is a high probability we'll, we will continue to see at least one more major drive to the downside with probably with you know new lows probably somewhere between 13 to 13 and a half thousand bucks for bitcoin if if we do see the uh the indicator itself shift and have a positive slope or massively reduce its current negative slope that will be the next sort of major brick in the long-term house here that i'd be looking for to say hey bitcoin might have put probably put in a major low and maybe even a macro low and it's time to be looking for a major major bounce and when i say major bounce i mean like you know one of those bitcoin bounces like 20 to 40 percent type move um in this case it's obviously still to the downside but uh, that can obviously change majorly by end of day here. Now, a few other things of interest uh, that you might find valuable is that, you know, this, the, this, uh, the last few major lows have created a, a regressional trend line, which, you know, the current, you know, the current drive is, is at right now. So that would be, you know, somewhat indicative that, hey, maybe this is kind of a bottoming area. Um, and then also, if you can look at the green horizontal line, that's actually where all of the major lows have been put in on a closing basis in the past as well. And that already is kind of like a current low, actually. And if we were to take this even another step further, what I've done is, is I've actually gone ahead and I've measured the percentage drawdown from when the indicator itself turns red and... Um, uh, be between between that point and the next major macro low. Uh, for example, right here, the circle represents uh, turning red. The macro low would be obviously right here. So I've measured all of those out and found that on average, there is a correct correction, fucking crash is the correct word, at 61 spot, 3, 4%. Um, the interesting thing about that, we've actually already seen just about that. Uh, 61 spot, 6, 3% from high to low here from when that turned red. Um, now, can it go for more? Sure. I mean, I've also looked at a first standard deviation calculation, which would be 66 spot 80%. If we were to see, you know, another leg down, that'd probably be like the next area of interest, which guess where that puts Bitcoin? That puts Bitcoin uh, like, yeah, mid 13s, mid, mid to low $13,000 territory. So there you go. Um, I did forget to mention that the slope changes in the extreme zones for the red and green do correlate incredibly well around macro highs and macro lows. So again, um, you know, if we start to see that shift uh, coming into tomorrow, 
that's going to be a damn good indication that Bitcoin's put in a major low here and it's going to rally first before anything else. Um, if it doesn't, a good indication that Bitcoin's probably going to continue down uh, somewhere closer to like 13 or 13 and a half thousand bucks. Anyways, uh, on to the next one. So that obviously ties into this analysis over here. So the two day time frame for CME, I'm going to go through the full explanation on this one. It's just the volatility versus stochastic momentum uh, chart right here. Uh, this one is really starting to be mature. So when we observed this signal, we've seen an average move of 39.5% over the course of you know 24 to 25 days. First standard deviation represents a range between 32% all the way up to almost 47%. The interesting thing about this is that one, we've already hit the bottom end of the first standard deviation from the signal given. Uh, we've already seen, yeah, we've already seen uh, about 31, 32% move. And then also when we look at the average days, the average days, uh, we can see that thus far it's been 20, okay, it's been 23 days on today's closure. So like, we're so close to the average that I have to be thinking, um, you know, the, 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 the more time that transpires without Bitcoin breaking and closing below the current lows, the more likely that the probability is going to naturally shift in favor of the bull laws. And to take that one step further here, the two day time frame is closing tonight. So what does that mean? That means that the two-day time frame stochastic oscillator will actually turn to the upside if Bitcoin closes above 16,475 or 476. Currently, it's trading about three and a bucks above that uh, above that number. So if you see that happen, then this signal is like done as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, you do want to see a close of a closure, yes, but all things considered, you know, it's going to start to look a lot more like, hey, we've seen the average days basically 23 days. I mean, what's 24 days after that? What's one more fucking day? Uh, uh, Stochastic also has turned to the upside now, and we've already hit the bottom side of the first aviation. Like, it it would be very reasonable to say that, hey, it we probably have seen this the full extent of the signal play out. Just saying. Um, and if that comes alongside of the accumulation distribution indicator over here starting to turn up, okay, that's going to be like that's going to be quite compelling um, for the long term. Also, on that note, if we go to the higher term timeframes, uh, the two day time frame has been building some pretty significant bullish divergence here coming off of the last few lows. Uh, so that is in there. Now, I wouldn't necessarily look for that to play out like at this exact moment, but long term that is starting to build in. And it's not just on the two day time frame, it's also on the five day time frame, which also closes today. And this one is also building the same sort of bullish divergence after like the lowest. I think like the lowest reads in CME's history, at least. Nope, definitely not the lowest reads. Sorry, <laughs> that is not true. Uh, not even fucking close. <laughs> um, so there you go. Uh, so on the five day and the two day, we would need to confirm a local low in order for that to confirm regular bullish divergence, um, which would require a closure on a higher term time frame of about 17,000 bucks. If that happens, very likely we're gonna see a move towards 18 or 18.5. Personally speaking, I do think that Bitcoin would try higher after that as well. Um, but at least those would be sort of the next major areas of interest if that were to occur. Um, what else do we have? Um, I think that's it. What's the, f oh yeah, and also the monthly stochastic oscillator for CME is currently pivoted at 17,671. So if you were to see a move um, back above there before closure today, which, you know, still another like thousand bucks away, that would be another damn good indication that, hey, you know, we have another another brick in that building that says, hey, probably a lot closer to a major low than not. Um, the weekly, uh, that one turns up above seven, uh, 17,500. The five day turns up above 17,200, um, which I thought was interesting there too. All right, sweet. So let's uh, now let's go down to the lower term time frames because yesterday, yesterday, um, yeah, yesterday I was looking at this as probably going to put in a local high. Um, it did not confirm a local high that I was looking for in order to be get another test of the downside. I wanted to see a closure below 16 um, or on spot price action, 16,300. We did not get any closures down there. We got a move down there. Um, and then, but, uh, but that was certainly against my bias. So I was wrong on that. Uh, but then we did see a closure above the prior spike high right here, which was 16, uh, 475 or 450. Yeah. Right here. And that was our signal for looking for a move back around 17,000 bucks, which is kind of where we're at right now. So I would go as far to say on CME here, you have a couple of, a couple of very interesting areas. 
Um, one short term, you know, Bitcoin does a pullback. I'm, I'm probably, I, I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> it's like, I don't fucking know. I'm looking at the higher term time frames right now. Uh, 16,450 would be the same sort of pivot to the downside. So that means that if you do see a four hour closure below there, I'd be looking for a return back down to the, to the overall range lows. Um, by the same token, if we do see a closure, closure above the range highs, about 17,000 bucks, I would be looking for Bitcoin to pop back up 17.5 at probably even 18,000 bucks. That obviously sets into motion this chart and probably even this chart and some of the charts that we looked at over here as well. That would actually look quite good. Um, when we go and check out stochastic momentum, we can see on the six, uh, not the six hour, the daily time frame, it's going to be nice and vertical as long as Bitcoin's above 15,600 on CME. 12 hour time frame is also up as long as Bitcoin's above 16,300. Six hour time frame is also up as long as Bitcoin's above 16.5. Four hour is actually also up as long as Bitcoin's above 16.5 as well. And the hourly is probably down, if I had to guess. Actually, it is down, but it's going to try to cross the upside here. Uh, pivot is currently at 16.727. So lower term time frames, a lot more, a lot less interesting than the higher term time frames right here. But, uh, you know, still you can kind of see the interplay between, um, between those. So I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. Um, uh, just going back on over here. I think, yeah, that's probably the, that's, yeah, that's probably the best place to be leaving off again. Don't follow them into the program. We're going to have sales again in the future. So it's all good. If you can't decide in like the next day or so, like, don't worry, <laughs> there's going to be another one. Um, it's more important to, to, to figure out if it's a good fit for you or not. So, um, if you aren't in the quant program, definitely wait for the video later today. Also, if you're interested in the jewel or jewel light as uh, that strategy will be utilizing such tools. So that's a good place for me to stop it. I want to be wishing you the best, best as always take care, much love and see you hopefully soon.